Hi everyone, welcome to my Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repro Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I am an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencasts, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, uh, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at some technical notes that I have written in regards to how to install Revit server uh, within a server operating system environment. These notes that I have created are based upon video tutorials that I have learned and watched and constant building and rebuilding of Revit servers. Uh, and so here are my notes. Number one, when we're installing Revit server, we need to make sure that the basic system requirements are met, that we're running uh, a, a server class operating system, so Windows Server 2008 or higher. The Revit server that you're installing needs to be on a single domain, which, and as long as you have subdomains that are of the same ma main master domain, you're okay. This is not like um, Autodesk A360 collaboration with Revit, where that can be used across multiple companies with multiple different domains. Um, <clears throat> From this technical notes aspect, the perspective as well is that you are an application engineer. You're installing it for instruction or tutorial purposes or troubleshooting purposes. So create a virtual machine. Um, you can use, uh, there's a lot of software out there for working with uh, virtual images. The one that I use is Oracle Virtual uh, Box. And when you run the software, you can create as many virtual images as you want, as you can see here, and I've created a whole bunch of them. You start up that virtual image, and then you install the operating system that you need to work with. So for Revit Server 2015 or 16, you need to make sure you have your server operating system installed right off the bat. Make sure it's a clean install, and make sure that you change it constantly. Second step, is install Microsoft Silverlight if it has not been installed. From there, you'll go to the uh, server manager and you'll add roles using the role wizard. And you'll want to add the following roles, application server and web server. Click next a couple times. Add your .NET, your TCP port and activation, your web service IIS support as well. And then a few clicks later, next later, you'll hit static content default document, directory browsing, HTTP errors, redirection, ASP.NET, extensibility, ASP and CGI, and server-side includes, HTTP logging, request monitor, tracing, basic authentication, Windows authentication, digest authentication, client certification mapping, uh, IAS client cert map authorization, uh, author URL, filtering, IP and domain restriction, performance, static and dynamic content compression, IAS management console scripts, tools, and services, and IAS six scripting tools. Click next and review all of the information before you click install. If everything looks good, click install. Once it's finished installing, verify on the screen that you have the green check marks that you want. After this is finished, close this installation window, close the server manager window, and reboot your virtual machine. Once your machine has been rebooted and you're back up and running in the Windows Server environment, go back to the server management window, console window, and verify you have six roles have been installed for the application server and 40 roles have been installed minimum for the web server IIS. If this is true, then run your setup.exe file from Revit Server. This installation file you can either download or get it from your any of your Autodesk products that have Revit. For example, if you have building designs with premium or higher, go through that setup window and specify tools and configurations and get to the Revit Server installation there. Reboot the computer once Revit Server has been installed again. Get back up and verify you have not net.tcp listener and port sharing 
adapter is within the server management application role. Make sure they're running. From there, you want to create your rsn.ini text file with Notepad on all the host, accelerator, and admin works and ad, admin servers, as well as all the workstations that have Revit installed on them. Um, the default location is C program data Autodesk Revit Server 20, whatever version, 14, 15, 16, config rsn.ini. Uh, if you're using Windows XP, the different location. Uh, there was an issue up to uh, version IE8 so um, and 10 sometimes. So when I wrote these notes, it seemed like IE version 9, 32-bit was the only one that was functioning. They have corrected this since. So uh, for number step number seven, just open up Internet Explorer. Go to HTTP, the name of the server, um, forward slash uh, Revit Server Admin 20, 0, 14, 15, or 16. Uh, and once you've done this, it will actually bring up the console and show you Revit Server. You, if you need to, you can go to uh, verify by going to the advanced system settings of the computer environment variables and ensure that you have specified host, accelerator, and admin or a variation combination of the three for each of the Revit servers that you're building. You need uh, one main host for the master central. You need everybody else to be accelerators. And you need as many of them that you want to have admin rights so you can actually get into the screen. Set up your permissions on Revit server if you need to, optional, so that you have Windows authentication. Then go back to Internet Explorer and re-verify again that it works with username and password. Go to each of the workstations now that the server site is finished and install Revit extensions, which you can pull from Autodesk accounts. Once you've done this, verify that the workstation Revit is up and running. Go to the Collaboration tab, expand the Collaboration panel, and verify that you can see the Revit server accelerators that you want to put in there. You can type in the name of the accelerator or the IP address. Once you've done this, it'll say it's connected, and then open up a Revit model, turn it into a central model, and save it onto your Revit server as a central model in whatever subfolder you want to create. If that doesn't work, you need to start troubleshooting, and that will be saved for another screencast. Uh, and lastly, since you are working in a virtual environment, you may need to set your NIC connections in that virtual settings uh, for a bridge connection. And that's it. These are my notes for uh, installing Revit Server. Thank you very much for watching my screencast, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.